on August 1st, Fox News reported that you settled a lawsuit with the World Economic Forum after they failed to remove your name from its 2021 list of young global leaders, even though you declined the nomination. Why did your name continue to appear on World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders list? And what are your ties to the organization, if any? Oh, so the ties to the organization are none. My only link was actually being the chief critic of their agenda. So everybody in this room might not even know what we're talking about. There's an organization called the World Economic Forum. They stand for a vision of the world called the Great Reset. What is the Great Reset? It's a different vision of how we're all supposed to live. It says that we have to dissolve the boundaries between the public sector and the private sector, between governments and companies, between nations, to be able to now work towards what they call the global common good. I'm against this. I am a citizen, not of some global citizen. I am a citizen of this nation, the United States of America. I'm proud of that, that is true. That means something to me. And on this side of the pond in 1776, we said that we the people determine how we sort out our differences, where every person's voice and vote counts equally. In the old world Europe, it was the other way. It had to be a small group of elites in the back of palace halls in old England that decided what was right for the rest of society at large. In this country, we said no to that vision. We the people decide our own destiny as citizens of a nation. So that old world view, though, it started to rear its head again in recent years in the form of this World Economic Forum. They hold a meeting every year in Davos. Klaus Schwab is the person who leads it. It's basically a view that says the citizens cannot be trusted on questions like climate change or racial injustice. It has to be settled by a class of global elites, including large billionaires. It's part of why they decided to name a lot of young billionaires. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, others have been named on their list. So a funny thing happens. I wrote my first book, Woke Inc. It was a criticism of this agenda. Every one of my books has, especially Capitalist Punishment, has gone into detail exposing some of the corruption in this worldview. I went on to start a company, Strive, to push against the ESG agenda. That's the manifestation of the Great Reset in our, capitalist, in our capital markets. But then a curious thing happens. A guy who's affiliated with the World Economic Forum reaches out and says, hey, we're going to give you an award. You're going to be named on our list of young global leaders with all this long list of billionaires. And, you know, Ibram Kendi was going to be on that list. And this is a guy I've been very critical of. So I said, no, I don't think this is going to be a good fit for me. I disagree with you all. If you want to have a debate, I'll debate anybody. But I'm not a good fit for your list. I declined the award. A few months later, my name shows up on the list anyway. It's interesting. I get a bunch of text messages from people. Congratulations. So I'm a little confused. So I said, wait a minute. I told you guys not to add me to this list. They said, oh, sorry, sorry. We'll take it off. Years later, it keeps popping up a couple of years later. And so the people start asking, wait, why is your name on this list? So you know what I did? I don't believe in standing by. And there are other good allies like Glenn Beck, Elon Musk, others who apparently, who have also been opponents of their agenda who have been named. But I believe in taking action. I believe in accountability. So I sued them. I sued them in court. And I'll tell you a little bit later on a lawsuit that I filed just earlier this week against the Department of Justice. I don't believe in just being a passive bystander. I believe in accountability. So I sued him and we got everything that we demanded, including most importantly, a commitment that this organization would never again defang or try to undermine its opponents by ensnaring them on their own lists. And so I'm happy to say that we're not gonna let anybody else off the hook. If Klaus Schwab tried to put me on his, on his list, he ended up on my list and that's how we roll and deliver accountability. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.